Our next speaker, Eric Weiss, What is Love? What is Love, Eric Weiss? Hello, Toastmasters, distinguished guests and judges. Back in 1989, I was interviewing with Master Sergeant Blanchard as a freshman in Army ROTC. And just then, this absolutely stunningly gorgeous Italian brunette walked by and gave me this mesmerizing smile. I was sick. I turned to Master Sergeant Blanchard and said, who is she? And he said, that's Cadet Sergeant Barbara Caliendo, a sophomore. And I said, is she part of your program? He said, yes. That's why she's wearing the same uniform. <laughs> I said, excellent, sign me up. He said, whoa there, I thought you were going to interview with the Navy and the Air Force. I said, no need, my future is here. <laughs> and he smirked, and I signed the paperwork. Well, after about six months and 6,000 push-ups later, I had the courage to ask Cadet Sergeant Barbara Caliendo to the military ball, and she said yes. And we had a great time that night. And later that evening, she said, so, Eric, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rank my beauty? And I said, well, I would give you a 9. Only a 9? And I said, well, I don't know much about your health. I plan on having a lot of children someday, and before I give a woman a 10, I need to know that she's genetically compatible. What planet are you from, Eric? She then proceeded to tell me all about herself, and I would later give her a 10, even without alcohol. <laughs> but we continued to date, and on or about our 20th day, we were having a great time together, but she dropped this big bombshell on me. She said, Eric, I plan on leaving the Army ROTC program, and if you want to remain my boyfriend, you're going to have to follow suit. Why, Bart? Because the military owns you. In a time of war, they can send you overseas, and your loved ones are lucky to get you back in one piece. And even in a time of peace, try asking for a vacation. See how easy that is. Now, I refuse to be a mistress to the military. I refuse to be your convenient second choice when your first love isn't available. Well, this was a powerful argument, but I didn't buy it, and we agreed to disagree. We continued to date. And on or about our 30th day, we had a big argument. Bart, I really don't think this is going to work. Our values just don't seem compatible. Well, Eric, i got to admit, you've got a strange way of thinking about a lot of issues, and I've been testing those in the last several days. But really, our values are very compatible, and I was only playing the devil's advocate. Well, Barb, the devil has enough advocates. <laughs> Perhaps you should stop carrying his water. Carry some of mine. <laughs> well, I'll work on it, but only, only if I get veto power over your wardrobe choices. <laughs> I guess you didn't like my multiple plaid suspenders and polyester suits, all in the same outfit. <laughs> okay. And you're going to have to stop being 10 minutes late to every single event in your life. I'll work on it. Well, good. Now that we've dealt with all the easy issues, let's deal with this big elephant that's in the middle of our room. I'm leaving the military, the Army ROTC program, and if you want to remain my boyfriend, you're going to have to follow suit. Well, I'm not quitting. Well, then I am. With that, she stormed out of the room and slammed the door behind her. And I let her go. You know, real men don't cry. But every now and then they have an episode of what I call booty wop. Booty wop. <laughs> Benign, uncharacteristic, temporary, voluntary, eye duck water pressure problems. <laughs> I said to myself, on the one hand, I really love the military. I mean, where else can you find a job where they pay you to blow things up? Where, where you get to interrogate terrorists and kill their friends. And instead of going to jail, they give you a medal, a salute, and maybe even a battlefield promotion. I mean, this has got to be the best job ever! Ever! But on the other hand, Barb is loyal and thoughtful and generous. 
and she is smart. Smartest woman I've ever met. Almost as smart as I am. <laughs> Glad you guys laughed at that. <laughs> and she is beautiful. She's so gorgeous. When I think of her, I feel like eating a Carl's Jr. hamburger. <laughs> but on the other hand, oh, who am I kidding? There is no other hand. And so then, for an emotionally crippled stoic like myself, I made a lightning quick decision. And only 30 minutes later, only 30 minutes later, I went running into that hallway to find my girlfriend and future wife. And there she was, impatiently waiting for me to come to my senses. And I came up to her and said, Bart, I choose you. I love you. I love you. Now, if this were Hollywood, she would have said, and I love you too, Eric. And we would have marched off into the sunset together singing, Climb every mountain, ford every stream. But this isn't Hollywood. This is a real life amalgam of three and a half years of courtship, subject to gross simplification and minor embellishment. So, our love story didn't happen exactly like that, but it's close enough. Fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, and judges. What is love? What is love? Some people would say love is a, a feeling, a habit, a passion, maybe even a commitment or a contract, or even a covenant, a union blessed by God. But at the heart of all of these, love is a choice. Love is a choice. It can be a big choice, like choosing to enter or leave the Army ROTC program. Or it can be a difficult choice, like choosing to compromise on a stubbornly held belief, or choosing to get rid of a bad habit like being late all the time or being a poor dresser. Or it can be an endearing choice, like the small acts of love and thoughtfulness and generosity that my wife Barbara shows towards me and our children on a daily basis. And it's these choices in which love manifests itself. In fact, it is these choices that define us let us resolve, no, 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 fellow Toastmasters, let us be inspired, let us be inspired to go forth today and continue to make good, loving choices.